there's a ranking of superior and inferior. So there's a very uh, the strong pattern that exists in Western philosophy, Western political theory, Western um, uh, even spirituality from above is that there is an above and there's a below. So I, I call this the spirituality of empire, that God just loves some and doesn't love others, right? And the haves and the have nots is how we taught it in the street and in our communities. The above and the below where it's people making their lives at the expense of others. It's not just living, it's having a structural position of power where the below is foundational. So for example, in the case of Israel-Palestine, to create Israel, the foundation had to be Palestine. Um, it needed to, and it extracts to, even if it doesn't extract labor from Palestinians, it extracts from the land, it extracts, if we can call it labor, the, the beautiful work in creating that Palestinians and the land have, have, have created for millennia. That's extractive of the state of Israel. And so there's this conception of above and below. And at the same time, Europe, modern Europe has had in its metaphysics, this recognition that, um, or this, this impulse, let's say, this impulse that its contradictions need to be exported out and ignored. Somebody else can deal with them in order to maintain Europe as a peaceful place, quote unquote. So for example, with 1492, with the expulsion of Jews from the Iberian Peninsula, many, many Jews went to Palestine, living there for centuries before 1948, were exiles from the Iberian Peninsula. Others came to these lands and became colonizers. And that is understandable psychologically if you are living in an imperial world and you're trying to survive, the only option empire gives is to go above. You need to shift context and go find a below. And we were the below. These lands were the below. And this happened also with Muslims who were expelled or and peasants who had their lands enclosed by nascent capitalism. And as they were struggling for land, they were told by their landlords, their rulers, hey, look at those colonies over there. There's a lot of land over there. Why don't you go? Right. And so Europe exporting its problems out to others so that it can maintain this, this uh, semblance of peace. And this is international law. International law was created for Europe. There is a Europe and a non-Europe. Non-Europe is the place of lawlessness, of piracy. International law did not apply in non-Europe until the creation of the United Nations. And that's a whole other conversation because that logic continues of the human and the non-human, of the above and the below. So this, this question in rights is very flawed because it focuses on the human as the center of life rather than of life. Like where is the defense of life, right? There's just a defense of the human. And then the asterisk on that is, well, what kind of human? And so then this is where dehumanization comes in. Racialization is dehumanization. The phenotype is the marker. That's the secondary part. The essential, the essence of racism is dehumanization. So with Zionism, Rather than Europe, the West, recognizing that it needs to confront major contradictions about itself, and, and we can use a Jewish question as a longstanding one, right? Rather than confronting that, the, the dehumanization that they have to others who are not how they believe the standard of a human should be, and, and they've treated Jews this way for centuries in Europe, rather than finally confronting that contradiction, they export it out to Palestine. 